When the iconic SR-71 Blackbird was retired from duty in the United States Air Force, many people believed that aerial reconnaissance had achieved its pinnacle. These individuals were unaware that the SUR-72, which would eventually replace the SUR-71, would soon be introduced. The goal of Lockheed Martin's hypersonic drone is to be a ghost and a terrible nightmare for the adversary's air defense systems. It is designed to embody the most ambitious technological ideas of the latter decades. However, is it capable of surpassing its famous ancestor in every respect? In today's video, we have not only the solution to this question, but also a number of other answers. If you had to name the most memorable U.S. military aircraft, Lockheed's SR-71 Blackbird would undoubtedly come out on top. Against such a backdrop, it's difficult to learn that its beginnings are partially due to an incident that occurred in the 1960s with pilot Gary Powers, whose U-2C Dragon Lady was destroyed by a surface-to-air missile over Soviet territory. Following what happened and taking into account the rapid development of radar and missile technology by its main adversary during those years, the United States understood that Dragon Lady would become even more susceptible during reconnaissance flights in the future, indicating that it was time for a change. In late 1957, the CIA authorized Lockheed to develop a new undetectable spy plane, nicknamed Archangel, a reference to an earlier U-2 program known as Angel. Kelly Johnson, the head of Lockheed's Secretive Skunk Works Division in Burbank, California, took charge of the project. The goal was straightforward, fly faster and higher than the Utwo. Stealth, of course, was not overlooked by anyone there. Furthermore, following a meeting with the CIA in March 1959, the aircraft prototype was modified to minimize the radar cross-section by 90%. Only the first letter and the number 12 from the name Archangel remained after the device's development, denoting the command's choice among the chain of Skunk Works designs. This is how the uh, 12 was born. This rebranding not only adhered to military nomenclature conventions, but it also significantly reduced foreign spies' excessive attention to U.S. aircraft. However, even before the a-12 went into service. Its planned goal of replacing the U-2 in flights over the USSR and Cuba seemed increasingly implausible. By that time, Soviet radar systems had boosted their blip to scan ratios, making the uh, 12 vulnerable. By 1965, satellite photo reconnaissance programs had advanced to the point that flights over Soviet territory were no longer required for the effective acquisition of strategic and intelligence information. Despite the fact that all 13 A-12 spy planes were retired in 1968, they were still able to fly over North Korea and demonstrate their capabilities during Operation Black Shield at Mach 3.1. And at an altitude of 80,000 feet above North Vietnam, photographing surface-to-air missile locations. However, even before the A-12 was retired, the SR-71 Blackbird was gaining ground on its predecessor. In November 1967, both reconnaissance aircraft flew three similar routes along the Mississippi River, roughly one hour apart, with data collection systems activated. Although the uh, 12's camera had a broader field of view, the SR-71 was able to capture intelligence that the uh, 12 could not, and in higher resolution. Furthermore, the uh, 12 was meant to use one of three different types of high-definition cameras, whereas the SR-71 featured both photography and signal intelligence capabilities. Overall, the Blackbird was more adaptable, had a 2 seat cockpit versus the uh, 12 single, and had a larger fuel capacity, and was intended for everyday use, but the uh, 12 was a covert craft used exclusively on exceptional occasions. After entering service in 1966, the SR-71 began to smash virtually every possible record. 
From 1976 to the present, it has been and continues to be the fastest jet aircraft in the world, thanks to its amazing match 3.3 cruising speed, not to mention the records for highest sustained flight. Also, the fastest flying time between London and New York was set during two different trips in 1974. Since 1968, Blackbird reconnaissance operations over North Vietnam and Laos have averaged one per week for over two years. By 1970, they were operating two flights each week, and by 1972, they were flying once a day. Because of the high volume of service, the North Vietnamese fired approximately 800 air defense systems against the SR-71 during the Vietnam War, but none of them hit their target. Throughout its career, the Blackbird avoided almost 4,000 missiles. Yes, this plane could truly fly away from missiles when the gas pedal was pressed. Due to the high production and maintenance costs, the U.S. Air Force suggested to Congress that the Blackbird be decommissioned in 1989. Many Blackbird fans believe that a certain segment of the military and congressional detractors who lacked knowledge about the SR-71 and any understanding of the nature of aerial reconnaissance were to blame for the legend's demise, which is why they were extremely negative toward the SR-71 by the early 1980s and routinely operated with fictitious amounts of $400-$700 million per year to support the aircraft and $5,000 for the cost of one flight hour. You know, SA was the only operator of the final two airworthy Blackbirds after the 1990s. The remainder of the famed scouts were housed in museums. Time passed, but there were no worthy heirs to Blackbird on the horizon. Of course, Lockheed's F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II fighters are the true rock stars of their generation. However, their missions were distinct from those of the reconnaissance aircraft. Lockheed Martin originally publicly unveiled the SR-72 in 2013, stating that the successor to the SR-71 Blackbird, or the son of Blackbird, will be the same size as its iconic ancestor, but capable of flying at hypersonic speeds of up to Mach 6. Naturally, such claims blew the minds of both the media and aviation enthusiasts. Previously, only the experimental North American X-15 could reach such speeds. Many figured that Lockheed had just been talking specifically about the aircraft. However, they were characterizing the future technology as a platform for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. You may have predicted that the aircraft would be a hypersonic UAV. Skunk Works engineers' major objective, as envisioned, was to design engines for the future drone. After all, it had to cover multiple flying modes at once, including subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic. To achieve design speeds by the time of publication in 2013, the team had already been working closely with Aerojet Rocketdyne for more than seven years to develop a method for integrating a ready-made turbine with a hypersonic ramjet engine scramjet to propel the aircraft from standstill to Mach 6 or higher. The future drone engine starts with a normal Pratt and Whitney F-100 and General Electric F-110 turbofan engine as its foundation. This enabled the device to take off from a standstill and accelerate to supersonic speeds, just like a normal fighter. However, as the figure approached Mach 3, the second part of the engine kicked in. It's said to be a dual-mode ramjet engine that compresses using the huge pressure of incoming air at supersonic speeds in a variable air intake system. As a result, such a solution will allow the aircraft to not only outperform its iconic grandfather, the Blackbird, but also exceed the hypersonic barrier of Mach 5 set by the Skunk Works team. So a Blackbird will very definitely face harsh temperatures as its second obstacle. As a result, specialists will need to ensure that the extreme speed combined with the heat does not transform the glider into hot jelly. The team will undoubtedly benefit from incorporating composites, high-performance combinations of carbon ceramics and metals into its design, particularly for essential UV components. For instance, a normal steel hull will begin to melt at 2500 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the SR-72 must withstand temperatures of 3500 degrees Fahrenheit or greater to survive properly. After NASA's X-43 and Boeing's X-51 programs propelled the United States to the forefront of hypersonic technology, the country redirected its focus for decades to battling the worldwide terror threat. In 2017, Lockheed Martin Executive Vice President and Skunk Works CEO Rob Weiss informed the public that hypersonic propulsion testing for the SR-72 had been completed. 
and the crew was ready to begin work on the SR-72 Flight Research Vehicle FRV, a technological prototype, which was the size of an F-22 Raptor, roughly 60 feet long, and had a single engine capable of flying at Mach 6 for several minutes. Just one year later, Lockheed Vice President Jack O'Banion gave some further light on the company's accomplishments in additive manufacturing and computer modeling, stating that creating such a gadget in the early 2010s would have been simply impossible. Furthermore, 3D printing enabled the team to integrate the engine's cooling system. In March 2018, the Russian president announced the beginning of an unofficial hypersonic arms competition by introducing the H-47 M2 Kenzal hypersonic missiles. Following this, even mention of the SR-72 program was removed from official Lockheed Martin web pages. It's as if all of our collaboration with Aerojet Rocketdyne was placed on pause. However, Lockheed and U.S. Air Force officials have repeatedly referenced the employment of new hypersonic vehicles, such as the SIR-72, as hypersonic missile launch platforms while releasing or launching hypersonic missiles in high-speed flight presents numerous engineering challenges due to the enormous pressure and heat. Lockheed Martin has already demonstrated the feasibility of successfully launching air-to-air -air missiles at speeds greater than Mach 3 using Y. F-12 Prototype Interceptors in the eyes of the general public, the SR-72 appeared to have perished at some time. However, in 2021, the Air Force's Profession of Arms Center of Excellence produced a video showing a single-engine flight research aircraft that is very similar to Lockheed's previous renderings. Only a year later, the sequel to the critically acclaimed film Top Gun Maverick was released in theaters, with spectators being shown a specific dark star. The Skunk Works engineers developed a hypersonic aircraft, and they appear to have succeeded in making it look like a real aircraft. It's unlikely that the filmmakers were able to accelerate to match 10, but the film's producer asserted, either jokingly or seriously, that the US Navy noticed the Chinese satellite's interest in the gadget. To accomplish this, he even had to alter his route to photograph Dark Star. However, who knows? Perhaps the PRC military simply has American film aficionados among its ranks. According to recent interviews, the first flight of the SR-72 prototype is anticipated for 2025, with the aircraft entering service as early as 2030. Given that the U.S. Air Force planned to introduce the 6th e generation NGAD fighter into service in the early 1930s, one can only hope that the budget can survive the pressure of two Ironbirds at the same time. Will the SR-71 Blackbird successor emerge from the shadows by the 2030s, or will we have to wait until 2040 to witness the latest UAV? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments section. And if you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell for more stuff like this one. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one.